Hello everyone. So today we'll discuss about a particular shift that is happening in the alcohol consumption, and this is not happening only in India. This is happening globally. So we'll discuss on particular stock. This stock has been discussed before also, like a couple of or three four videos back. And today we are also going to discuss about this stock. Why I'm saying this stock? Because this stock is also going through a shift in alcohol consumption, and they are shifting their business along with it. So in this video we'll discuss detail about the stock. Previously we discussed only briefly about the company, but today we'll discuss what it does, how it does. and what are the future plans of it and how do i personally see that this stock can traverse along with this shifting of alcohol consumption which happening in india as well so stay with me till end of the video to get all the information so that it becomes easy for you to process the information and process the entire spectrum of the information so that you can make a decision whether this stock suits your portfolio or not saying that please don't consider this video or any video on this channel investment advice suggestion or stock suggestion stock memeing nothing like that we have to pick one stock to discuss everything and this is one of the stock which i picked for this um, week and similarly next week some of the stock will be picked but in none of the uh, stock what what i discuss is a suggestion or a recommendation at any point in time second disclaimer for this particular company yes i invested when i discussed the first time and in the middle also i invested little more because when it corrected by 10 12% on the price which i invested i invested little more because i had a rational on why this stock can be a good return for me again i'm saying it's for me it's my uh, understanding and my analysis okay so let's jump into this part so what shift is happening so let's see so this has the company is again global spirits okay uh, global spirits limited gsl so this is screenshot which i took from their uh, quarterly results which came on november 15 uh, i was on vacation so couldn't get the video this that time so it's coming out right now maybe it's late i'm not sure about it So I just I'll go through this and try to read everything. Okay, so this is a person called Dhruv Kashyap. He is a retail investor, and out of all the questions which a lot of people asked on investment companies, uh, all these funds, funds, and all who invest, this guy asked like the most uh, sensible questions, which are not repeatable. Also, which nobody asked. So this that's the reason I took this screenshot, and it's very important question as well. So I'll just go through and read it. So Sekhar is the person who was giving answer from the Global Spirit site, and the person who is asking is Nirmal Dhrupashap, as you can see over here, right? So he says, Sekhar, I assume that you spent long time in the industry. Just wanted to get a perspective on some color for you on geographic white spaces. So basically, he is saying to give some kind of information on the what's happening ge geographically in the alcohol sector. So what he is saying is that what's happening with this part is very important. What's happening very really interesting is the last few months and years. a lot of entry level liquor segment is vacated okay so basically what happening globally and this actually happening in india if you go dig down deeper see the data people are moving a notch up the segment so people who are drinking or who are consuming basically uh, like very cheap level products they are increasing their expense on the liquor so similarly if somebody is uh, spending some 100 bucks for example is going to 150 level brand somebody was spending 150 rupees is going for 200 rupees of brand so this is happening not only is happening globally this is what Dhruv is saying, and data also suggests this is happening. So, example is saying when United Spirits Limited is also a listed company, got acquired by Diageo, and how the MNC is focused more on the premium and the more expensive brands. Okay, so USL is only focusing on the expensive brands, and this again uh, probably you can go through the USL letters and see even they are saying the same thing. So there is significant vacancy that's also getting created in terms of entry level spirits. Okay, not just in India but abroad. Okay, and why I am saying this because this company actually is a market leader in terms of in the terms of value or entry level spirit section. So this is why it is very important. This shift is happening. So what is exactly happening? So companies are moving from value segment to value plus segment, or basically from uh, entry level spirits to uh, your non entry level spirits. And this is a hole getting created. And some companies which are market leader in that segment, they can capture the brand. So this is one space getting created for GSL in India. GSL, if you want to know, they have they have very very strong economic portfolio so as i told you this value segment right entry level segment they have very very strong portfolio in that saying that they are only available in few states six or seven states they are available right now and they have no plans of going pan india the company works in that manner this is what management is saying they are launching a premium portfolio also why these things are very very important one and two is very important this space is creating vacated which this company can target i told in the previous slide and they are also trying to enter into this sorry they are trying to enter this particular segment which is premium segment right so here the margins are more so these are two segments number 1 and number 2 which they can target is it to the present only seven strategic markets this is point number 1 they are very 
like well entrance consumer business what they are saying basically they are into good in the consumer segment and the price wise they have a price range of 1000 to 3000 so this is a very very wide range here in the entry here in the super premium in the middle they are targeting economy uh, value value plus what they say then super premium premium and uh, then mid premium everything is there in the middle so there's a wide spread of playing around then they are covering rural consumption okay these states what i'm saying is seven state states so basically it's haryana west bengal punjab jharkhand uh, some part of up and telangana so if you see these states these states are not like metro cities or like a bigger economically sound states a lot of the poor states but come if you compare to karnataka or compared to tamil nadu compared to maharashtra these states are not at that level so they are focusing on those states where the consumption level is increasing from economy to no, economy to next level or i would say just a premium pre economy premium kind of level right so they cover rural consumption and they try to go into aspirational urban consumption so i just uh, erase this part why this becomes important is this aspirational urban consumption so this is not urban consumption this is aspirational urban consumption people who are drinking 100 rupees of alcohol they want to drink now 200 rupees of alcohol i don't know any brand in this segment so i'll not name the brands but example is that if people who are drinking 100 then the rural side they are becoming urban aspirational urban so they are moving to 200 they are not going to go for 500 rupees of brand they are moving 100 to 200 so these company targets these kind of people they who drink for 100 and who want to move and go to 200 okay so this is what the primary business of this the primary segment was this the third if you see innovation dedicated towards consumption pattern so they have a very healthy pipeline of products based on local test and preference we'll see the product line also by the names and everything probably you can understand why they say that a healthy pipeline of product based on local taste and preferences okay then allow business to react quickly as well as set trends so this is what they are saying they are launching more than 12 new brands or new products in the coming uh, few months or a couple of years maybe so they are trying to uh, bring innovation or bring a new product every now and then then they have a strong operational platform okay why this is important because this we will we'll know about this why this company is strong operational platform then relationship with key alcohol buyers then ethanol play to ensure capacity utilization in to give a nutshell about it this company has a very strong hold in the b2b segment so b2b segment in the sense they are have a good manufacturing base so if you have a good manufacturing base you can use the same manufacturing setup to get into the consumer segment here if you see about the company okay so this is whole how this entire value chain works so global spirit limiteds its key met key raw material is rice okay so rice they used to uh, procure buy from the market broken rice and everything but recently they tied up with fci so fci is food corporation of india which has a lot of buffer rice is kept and gets spoiled so they have tied up with FCI, which is the procurement source of raw material. And this has reduced their cost by around 1.5 to 2 rupees per kg kind of thing. So it's a huge, huge advantage for them. Then they have an entire distillation unit owned by them. Okay, so they are the owner of distillation unit. Here they produce ENA and ethanol. So ethanol we all know, it's a fuel uh, alternative kind of thing, which not alternative, but kind of it gets mixed with uh, this uh, uh, fossil fuel and then gets uh, like reduced the dependency on fossil fuel 100%. ENA is a full form I forgot but this is something with the purest form of alcohol so you can say it's 95% alcohol okay so normally if you see a whiskey and all they comes around in the range of 42% beer and all comes in the range of 6 to 8% some beers are also 5% right and then vodka and other things I don't know what the percentage is but somewhere in the range of this so ENA is used to manufacture these alcohols so 95% uh, ENA is the alcohol content, so these manufacturer companies buy from uh, Global Spirits and they make alcohol from this ENA. So this company produce ENA. As I told you, since they produce ENA, they can also move to consumer segment. So here they are doing. So out of their own manufacturing units, they move into consumer business. In consumer business, they have two segments. One is known IMFL, Indian Manufactured Foreign Liquor segment. Sorry, that is the value segment. There is a lot of brands in that, right? Uh, small value segment in the sense 100 rupees, 200 rupees kind of thing. Then the premium IFL, IMFL segment where they are launching few premium products. So we will see that. Then they have premium segment which is franchisee bottling. So you can see VAT69 is a big brand. Then I am not sure whether this is a blood spread or something like that. Okay. So people who identify this bottle can put the name in the comments. <laughs> and this is some red label, black label. Actually, I don't know. 
for these things are basically premium brands which this company provides a bottling option for these companies okay and then they sell to beverage companies and fuel companies so basically ena they sell to beverage companies which they used to produce further uh, drinks and ethanol they sell to fuel companies so this is the entire business what they do they procure rice distill use some part of it for the own manufacturing or com uh, consumer segment products some of them they uh, sell it to beverage companies and fuel companies and from contract contact manufacturing side they do uh, bottling for the premium brands so this is what the entire company does three segments they are the largest player in the value segment i told you right some brand they launch run from the local flavor side so if you see this is nimbu so nimbu flavored then ghumar i think it's popular in rajasthan okay then heer ranja narange so this if you see the names of this brand also they connect a lot to local population and the value segment of the population okay then if you see their value segment volume million ke sir fine share air 18 this is only about value segment and this is not about the premium segment value and value plus so in financial year 18 they did 12.8 uh, million cases okay in 19 11.9 9 million cases 20 it was only 11 21 it was 12.3 and 22 it was 14.6 million cases they have done not bottles or not liters these are cases one case contains of i think 24 bottles so they do a uh, total uh, 14.6 million cases in this particular segment not the premium segment and over the relation per case so per case how much profit they make so now their last year they make 461 rupees per case previously it was 427 previous year it was 377 so in the last if you see this is the best year for them in terms of realization from value and value plus segment when they are going to move into premium and premium plus management is saying that they are going to realize around 520 rupees per case so the realization increased by 80 rupees around uh, sorry 60 rupees around from 461 to 520 when they move to premium and premium plus segment this is the reason why they want to move from this segment because premium and premium plus segment have more realization and second part the customer stickiness is very strong when it comes to uh, premium and uh, extra premium segment okay and this is proven fact people who generally wear nike or adidas there's no relation this saying people who wear nike and adidas normally go for nike adidas in the future also they won't go for lower level brands or any value level brands so the stickiness of customer is very high in terms of premium brands beat any brand beat any segment alcohol segment footwear segment apparel segment that's why every other company want to move a layer up into the premium segment okay. so same thing is happening with this particular company also so change of lanes change of lanes versus where this is for premium value and value plus segment right so this company is going to get into this premium segment also they all have launched already governors reserve it's a semi premium whiskey and then octan premium whiskey seventh heaven they're going to launch super premium whiskey and then uh, lafayer napoleon three years brandy okay so this is again solely launched and terai they have indian dry gin which is already present this is again premium segment so you can see these are the segments what they are trying premium premium super premium premium and semi premium and if you see the size of this market so there are 50 million cases they can sell here they have 15 million cases here they have 2 million cases and here they almost equal to 4. Uh, like equal to 0.5 million cases so this is the what the size of the market price for the plants then you see business segments where this business company deals with so it's only they have two segments one is manufacturing business which generates 59% of the revenue and there's consumer business which generates 41% of the revenue and this is uh, becoming more and more skewed towards consumer business if you see two years before financial report it was almost 80% kind of thing Uh, in the case of manufacturing business but it was only 20% now they are increasing it to 41% and they are saying it will increase further uh, going down the line they are focusing more on the consumer business here as i told you we discussed before also bulk spirits sorry bulk spirits which is ena and then franchise bottling which do for bigger brands right so this is mcdouble i believe right and then by products they out so whatever left out by product of all this process right they create animal feed so animal feed revenue is something which they are not highlighting any of the financial results even in their concord also they just ignore the fact that this is by product and some kind of revenue is coming i think around 7 8 crore they got in the as per the last financial st discussion statement discussion what did happen but something this is like a very fast moving thing they produce alcohol get some by product sell it to as animal feed they can do this over this is not something which they want to focus on these are the two segments what they are focus sorry uh, one is uh, manufacturing business and one is something your consumer business is something which they are focusing animal feed and something we can ignore for now 
in the value they have uh, this price range 40 rupees 60 rupees per 180 liter so it's basically quarter right 40 to 60 80 to 95 for in the value plus segment and premium segment they have products with the range of 125 to 700 rupees per 180 ml so these are the three segments what they are playing premium plus and everything we discussed they are going to launch but these are the different price segments so higher up you move more is the margin or more is the realization for this company so this is what the segment looks like what are the growth drivers if you see growth drivers long term borrowing has been reducing consistently from 20 to 22 it from 1759 million to begin to 1249 million so this is a check for us that their long term borrowing reduced debt equity ratio from 0.35 to become 0.11 so this is a check that their debt has been reduced financial finance cost the interest rate is they are taking money so debt reduced from 12.5 percent to 3.9 percent this is a very very drastic decrease so you can see it's almost decreased by more than uh, uh, 100 percent you can say right so it's less it's 200 percent almost so this is what they have decreased so this is a very huge huge decrease in case of cost of financing return ratio from 12 percent roe became 24 percent almost doubled in two years from 14 percent to 30 percent become roc in the case of last two years so these are very very attractive numbers so these numbers are what what is making this stock very, very attractive one part of the equation second part of the equation we will discuss now few numbers what we need to focus this is the number as for the last uh, result so uh, what is the september august and july so that result right july and september quarter two result so in quarter two they have done a revenue of 6335 wherein same quarter year on year last year they did 5939 so year on year 6.7 percent increase but if you see their net revenue or also increase but if you see the profit margin here EBITDA, EBITDA reduced a lot almost 47.4% from 893 EBITDA became 470 so why that is happening so few points to highlight first is their other expenditure so other expenditure increased from 865 to 1388 that is almost 80% increase in the other expenditure what is other expenditure other expenditure is fuel so fuel is a very very major cost for them sources of fuel are coal husk these are the major sources of fuel for them and the price of coal has increased a lot the price of fossil fuel also increased a lot and when the price of coal increases the price of rice husk also increases okay and this has increased almost 80 percent from previous quarter and this has dampened their entire profit margin so you can say profit margin reduced by almost half 1993 became 470 same reflects in the profit after tax also 525 it became 221 so this is a huge huge reduction but these these things are temporary none of these things are permanent so this rise in fuel cost rise in coal cost these all things are temporary eventually it has to go down and as per the statement they have already started going down so coal price is reduced little bit okay then your fuel price already reduced little bit so these things are getting more normalized so when these things normalize eventually your other expenditure will reduce and then your profit after tax will increase and eventually your earning per share will also increase so I'm highlighting because this is what is happening right now. Last quarter they lost uh, a lot of money. Didn't make enough money, I'll say. Uh, didn't have a loss, but didn't make enough money, and that is why this stock was taking some beating around 10, 12 percent uh, uh, after uh, like before, against one and a half month. But they recovered everything now in the last uh, one week or so. They moved around 10 to 12 percent. So this stock has all the potential. When the financial results came, when the commentary from the management came, and they told that other expenditure will be good they have some capex also planned some additional capacity also is already added to their existing capacity based on that stock has moved already 10 to 12 percent so these things something which is uh, temporary in nature yes it affects the price but it affects temporary and not the permanent so it affects the technicals of the stock but not the fundamentals the fundamental this company has been nothing wrong so far let's dig down deeper what are the future plans for this company so these are a few things so jharkhand project is a greenfield project so it's already started their commercial production September 2022. So when they are saying September started on 30th September exactly the date. That's why the impact of this Jharkhand project, which is a incremental capacity of 140 kiloliter per day, that is not added to the uh, margin of the second quarter of FY23 because started on 30th September and 30th September the quarter ends. Okay, so this impact of this will see in this particular quarter, October, November, and December. So the October, November, December result when, when they will come. Third quarter, you will see the impact of this 140 kiloliter per day of addition. Then, in the consumer business premium segment, they are saying it's a positive traction. So, 
compared to last year there is it almost 300% increase in the premium segment okay then they are saying this premium segment will uh, re result to 6% of the total consumer segment compared to 3% which is right now they are doing so they are seeing after one year so they are doubling on this also so these are some positive points then they geared up for innovation steam with core skills and product and packaging development so they are have launched a bottling uh, pet plant also like so they will produce their own pet bottles which also adds to the margin because they don't need to buy it from some other vendors so they're launching some new brands in the next 12 months they have set up a pet bottle a pet bottle manufacturing plant uh, which is going to produce internally so they are also they are saving money they're going to launch some new products in the second half of this uh, year also so this all will slowly slowly add to their existing business in the existing revenue they are saying inflationary pressure on the input grain and fuel what i told you this cost started to soften with new crop season adding profitability so this rice season already completed people have a lot of fuss people are selling farmers are selling rice to them so the cost has reduced a lot even fuel cost has reduced a lot and this will add to their margin so this is some future plans if i have to repeat future plans are into three parts first part is capex okay then their second part is cost reduction okay cost uh, reduction so capex cost reduction and then they have other option is uh, sorry uh, new launches okay so this is three things they are doing capex uh, cost reduction and new launches and all these things can together add a lot of increment to their margin so these are the future plans if you uh, look further what the capex and what the status of the projects in west bengal the second project their capacity addition is kilometer per day total capacity after complex 240 they will complete in quarter 4 financial 20 it is already completed in quarter 2 financial 23 there is Jharkhand thing which we discussed in quarter 1 next year FY24 that, that is April May June in West Bengal 3 will be completed so in that 240 they will add 60 more and they will eventually become 300 kilometer per day in Jharkhand 2 they will complete in next uh, same uh, quarter 1 FY24 they will add 60 more to this and they will become 200 and then in Bihar they will add 19 kilometer per day in quarter 4 financial 23 so this year financial year uh, 23 quarter 4 the total become 110 now it is somewhere around 90. Orissa they are in greenfield at 200 kilometer per day the approval is in process Uttar Pradesh also they want to do that is uh, same capacity which approval is in progress so basically they are into these many states so what happens after all this okay so you understood that they are adding these many capacity and these are the timelines what they are going to do they are existing plants also so after all this what will happen and what the timeline for it so again i have opened this group kashap uh, uh, comments and everything so he says his calculation he did everything convert a kiloliter per day to uh, on yearly basis so assuming all of this does come through in some shape or form at some time in the future so basically it's a projection of two to three years so total capacity will inc increase up to 40 crores to 45 crores per liters and management agrees with it Again, he says that roughly 20 odd crores that you were at the beginning of this calendar year. So that means by January and something. So calendar year is different than financial year. Right? So by January or something, they had a capacity of 20 odd crores. Okay, so it was around 17 to 18 crores actually. This is what management says. From 17 to 18 crores, they are going to get double. So over two years to three years. So that means they are going to reach a level of 40, 45. What he told, 14, 45 crore liters in a span of two to two and a half years this is what they are going to do and this is the green shoot so basically if i want to summarize this thing i'll just try to erase and this and write what summary of everything okay so summary of everything this is a total huge huge capex they are doing okay so 2x of a capacity is it's a huge number so huge capex is going to happen then they're going to increase their margin because they are going to get in the premium segment okay and then they are going to reduce their cost okay how first they are going to procure from FCI and second they are going to reduce uh, uh, the fuel cost and everything getting reduced okay so all right fuel and this is again not in their hand if it increases for everyone we reduce reduce for everyone so this is not in their hand but FCI is something which they all tied up and other options what they are doing is pet bottling so they have just started their own pet bottling which helps them to reduce the price of their uh, product also the like cost of the product so these three things are adding a lot of uh, uh, helps in the increase the margin and then capex and everything comes together and make this company a very very big valuable company in terms of what this company's management's plans are so if all these things comes through then this stock can give a very good return if and if they uh, 
do everything correctly and everything in the market also falls in place together so when i say everything falls in place together the market side these are the problems this stock can have first it's a very very regulated sector so if government comes with some regulations if government uh, so this can do bad everything bad for this company because they cannot do anything without government involvement in this particular sector alcohol is a very very highly regulated sector and advantage of this sector highly regulated is that government makes a lot of money from alcohol so government will not do anything wrong that will impact the revenue of government itself so this sector is a double edged sword you are there uh, you cannot rely you cannot live without government and government will not let you die also so this is a very very thin line where you cannot just uh, go on the other side and to walk on the very thin line so this is a very very highly regulated sector it can help you also it can backfire you also second very volatile raw material cost so since they don't have a raw material backward integration so they don't have farming kind of thing they have to procure raw material cost so today they have so raw materials today they have tried with fci maybe tomorrow fci doesn't don't have enough to uh, give it to them or they have some other source of procurement so that time raw material cost can increase when cost can increase the margins will get squeezed, uh, squeezed. is the margin squeeze the big risk how the margin can squeeze a lot of factors come they want to get consumer business in consumer business suppose their relation per case reduce a lot and people uh, competitions are getting heated and they, that gives the margin get squeezed squeeze a lot and they can't do much about it because this is very important factor and you can't do much with the competition because their competitions are very very huge who is the competition ready to get on united spirits this comes is quite big than this global spirit small cap company what is the advantage how they can uh, uh, how they can play around the competition is because they operate only in a very limited markets and the market is suits their product haryana rajasthan punjab so not in a very economically top states of india they are not dealing with the top states of india dealing with the states which are not in the top 10 of india in terms of economy so the market itself is different than red khetan or usl the market itself is quite uh, niche Right. So, if all these things risk, nothing happens, nothing wrong happens from government side, and there is, uh, they can, they are able to produce, procure material, raw material in a good cost, and there is, they can play around the market what they are trying. They don't do anything very uh, aspirational. They don't want to get into Karnataka or Bangalore kind of thing where they have to fight a lot with these bigger brands. Their margin can be protected. If all these things happens, then I don't see any risk. and whatever they have planned they can implement then this stock can be a good stock in the future and with with, with everything going in the favor the capex and everything so this was the video this was my analysis as per the reports and everything uh, feel free to do your own analysis and research before making any decision whether you want to invest in the stock or not and thanks so much for watching stay happy stay safe